world and they do bad things, right? Yeah, because there are evil, there are people who don't let um, the devil or Satan control them. Guys, there is no more coherence coming from this guy right here than we find on all of the major news stations that are being out there today. he's telling us what we find in this world is something more than just two guys getting mad over there but there's a, a real physical world and there's a spiritual world there are demons and there's a devil there's a God and there's a Satan and what this kid is telling us here is that some people listen to the dark deeds of Satan and think about this he came to kill steal and destroy but Jesus Christ came to give us life and to give us life everlasting this guy providing a great answer. And um, when I was saying that, I was also going to say that there are there are people who choose who choose to be um to be controlled and who follow him, not being even though the devil is not controlling them. They believe that it's a good religion, and they choose to be controlled and they choose to follow the devil, even though. They don't know what they're doing. Exactly. Think about this. This guy is really representing this well. There are some people who have legitimately chosen not to follow God. And that's what this guy is telling us. And to not follow God, you've got two options according to worldview. You're either following the prince of the power of the air, Satan himself, or God himself. And that's what we're here to say is, which one do you choose? And so, so how, which one should we choose? We should choose God because it's crazy how you decide to choose you decide to choose someone who is basically not related to you or doesn't comply to you because God was the one who created you and he was the one he's the one who is related to you but you decide that he doesn't matter and you do, want to follow someone Do you else. know what God did for us to demonstrate his love towards us? He he decided to um, put himself on a cross. Exactly. This, this kid is getting it right. God came in the person of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ bore our sins by dying on the cross. Think about this. There are many ways that people try to display their love to one another, but God displays his love for us in this. So while we were yet still sinners, Jesus did what on the cross? He, um, he died on the cross for us. Amen. And, if, um, and what do we have to do? Jesus Christ died, and then what happened? He was buried, and three days later, what did he, he do? He came back. He came back. He rose from the dead. So that means he will come back, and there's no such thing. And this as, guy's going to, he's going to be a preacher someday. As just because God's dead, I mean, he's not dead, but his body is, just because his body is dead doesn't mean he's not going to come back in either a human body or that a way that we all and, see him. See, what he says is this, listen, Jesus Christ was died and buried, but it's not that his body is still dead. Jesus rose three days later, bodily, physically, and now he sits at the right hand of God on high, the right hand of the Father. And notice when he says this, listen to this, he says that Jesus Christ is going to come back. And how is he going to come back? He's going to come back in glory. He's going to come back to judge the world in sin and righteousness. He's going to come back where? He's going to separate those who have bent the knee to Jesus Christ and faith and repentance from those who have rebelled against that God. And then the great day of separation will come. It's not just there. What happens to people? Do you know? What happens to those who don't place their faith in Jesus Christ? Where do they end up forever? They go into hell. That's exactly what it is. This guy right here has stood before us and given a more coherent understanding of the Christian faith than so many who stood before us for years, if not decades, trying to explain the gospel. This guy, what we find is this. The Bible talks about like this. For all of us must become like children. We must humbly come submitting to the gospel message, seeing that it is something that can be understood by the smartest philosopher in the world, but yet it's something that's so simple 
something so clear, something so basic to who we are, that a child can get it. This kid right here is a parable of the gospel to all of us. We come to God in humility based off of this message in Jesus Christ. And just like a child would approach Jesus and he says, let all of the children come unto me, you must come with that simple, like this kind of childlike faith to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen to him today. Listen to his message, for it corresponds with the coherence of what the gospel is being proclaimed. With that said, I'm going to step down, let some of the others, and I'm going to shake this guy's hand. Thank you.